Good morning, student. Today we are going to another chapter of and that is bacteria. Up till now we have discussed about the microorganisms. First one was the virus. Okay, we have discussed the viruses in detail. Viruses these are simple which are made up of only two components, and that is the uh, centrally present genetic material. DNA or the RNA and uh, the genetic material which is well protected up in code. Okay, then second one we have discussed the mycoplasma. Plasma, these are the simple prokaryotic mechanism. But the these are different from the bacteria. Bacteria also unicellular prokaryotic organisms, but in the mycoplasma, these are uh, devoid of cell wall. Okay. Mycoplasma, these are the simplest prokaryotic organisms. These are not having the cell wall. Okay. Today, we are discussing about the bacteria. It is also having the uh, simplest prokaryotic cell, but cell wall. Okay. The difference between the mycoplasma and the bacteria. My these are prokaryotic organisms without the cell wall, but the bacteria, these prokaryotic organisms having well developed cell wall. Okay, our chapter is the bacteria for the discussion. Okay, here the learn objectives or the topics which we have to discuss in this chapter. First of all, we are going to discuss the general characters of the bacteria. Then the classification based on the shape, then ultra structure of the bacteria, reproductions in the bacteria, and lastly the economic importance. Okay, these are the top of the discussion in the bacteria as per our syllabus, which is prescribed by our unit. Okay, we have to discuss in this chapter the general characters, then classification based on the shape, ultra structure of the bacteria and economic importance okay these are the topics for in the bacteria the first of all we are going to discuss general characters of the bacteria okay in this slide you can see the general characters of bacteria general character of the bacteria back these are microscopic okay the bacteria these are microscopic these are very small these not be observed with the naked eyes uh, for the operation of the bacteria cell the one has to use microscope okay the bacteria these are microscopic least differentiated living organisms these are simple prokaryotic organism and these are unicellular that's where we are saying these are least differentiated or the least complex living organisms okay bacteria these are microscopic these are differentiated living organisms and these are believed to be the among first primitive organisms on the earth. These are believed to be the among the first primitive organisms on the earth Okay, it is believed that uh, most of the theories believe that the life it was uh, started or it was uh, developed in the sea, that is in the form of cyanobacteria. Okay, that's why it believed that these bacteria <clears throat> are believed to be among the first primitive organisms on the earth. Okay, they show the typical prokaryotic characters. They show typical prokaryotic characters and they show the resemblance with both plants and the animals back to the typical prokaryotic characters and they resemble and the animals the bacteria these are the organisms which are the typical example of the prokaryotic organisms okay these bacteria bacteria till now reported up till now discovered considered in their characters okay large number of the bacteria these are up till now discovered these are reported and they show the considerable variation but some of the characters of these various bacteria these are common here we are discussing the general characters there are 
are number of the bacteria these are reported up till now but and these to the variation in their characters but they possesses the certain common characters and in cell we are discussing some of the common characters of the bacteria okay the bacteria these are mostly heterotrophic heterotrophic means these bacteria most of the bacteria they cannot synthesize their own food material like the green plants green plant with the photosynthesis and with the help of the photosynthesis process they can synthesize their own material that means these are green plants are heterotrophic in nature okay here most of the bacteria these are heterotrophic that means they cannot synthesize their own material they derive their food from the other sources that's why we are the most of the bacteria these are heterotrophic okay in the heterotrophic also the they show the different mode of nutrition that means some of the bacteria are sapro some bacteria are parasitic while the bacteria are symbiotic okay saprophytic means these bacteria derive their nutrition from the dead organic matter okay the bacteria which derive their nutrition from the dead organic matter these are referred as the saprophyte bacteria okay the parasitic bacteria parasitic bacteria these deriving their nutrients their nutrition from the living cell and also the infecting these living cell that means this association it is harmful whenever they derive cell from the living cell that means they are infecting they causing the injury to that particular cell and such type of the bacteria these are said to be the parasitic bacteria okay then the third one is symbiotic symbiotic means these bacteria live in mutual affinity or in mutual understanding with the other living organism such type of association it is not harmful both the organisms okay then some of the bacteria these are living in symbiotic association or in the uh, mutual affinity or the understanding with the other living cell and such type of the bacteria these are said to be the symbiotic association okay for example the classic example of the symbiotic association of bacteria with the legume plant okay the plants which are belonging to the legume family okay in these legumes there is a present nodules on the root okay and in these nodules there is a presence of the certain type of the bacteria which have the capacity to fix the nitrogen okay which are playing an important role in the nitrogen fixation okay nitrogen fixation means large amount of nitrogen it is present in the atmosphere but that nitrogen it cannot be utilized directly by the plants that nitrogen it must be get converted into the uh, usable form and that process is as the nitrogen fixation okay the nitrogen fixing bacteria which are in the root nodules of these are playing an important role in fixing nitrogen in the atmosphere okay that is the classic example of the sim bacteria while some of the bacteria are autotrophs autotrophs because some of the bacteria they possesses the chlorophyll pigments okay and these uh, particular type of the chlorophyll pigments these are called as the bacteriochlorophyll okay and and as they possesses the chlorophyll pigment they can synthesize their own food material okay the general characters the common general character the bacteria are most of the bacteria these are hetero heterotrophic the some bacteria they may be prophytic some of the bacteria these are parasitic some of the bacteria are sim okay while some of the bacteria possesses the chlorophyll pigment and thus they can synthesize their food material that's why here we are saying some of the bacteria are autotrophic that is they can synthesize their own food material okay and here the bacteria these are unicellular 
okay just we have discussed that these are least differentiated living organisms okay these are unicellular and these are morphologically the complex of all living organisms okay the bacteria all the bacteria these are unicellular and these are the complex of all living organisms okay then next the uh, the difference between the mycoplasma and bacteria is mycoplasma also these are prokaryotic and least differentiated but these are not having cell wall but here you can see the bacteria the, there is a presence of the cell wall okay this rigid and it is uh, made up of amino acid and the fat substrate the cell wall it is also present in the plants but here the cell wall of the area is uh, different from the cell wall of the plants because in the plants the cell wall it is made up of cellulose okay majority uh, cellulose is the uh, major component of the cell plant cell but here in the bacteria the cellulose it is present in a least amount and the cell wall it is rigid and the bacterial cell is made up of amino acid subunit and the saccharide units okay that is the difference between the bacterial cell and the plant cell okay in the plant cell the cell wall it is made up of main cellulose okay but here the cell wall of the bacteria it is made up of amino acid subunit and the saccharide units Okay, then also as it is a you know, prokaryotic cell, it lacks well organized nucleus. Prokaryotic. Okay, all you know there are two types of cells: prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell. Okay, here pro and carrion. Okay, there are two. Pro means primitive and the carrion means the nucleus. Okay, that means here the nucleus is not well organized. It means what? Nucleus is made up. Here the nuclear membrane is present in the nuclear membrane, the nuclear pore is present, then nucleoplasm is present, then also there is a of the nucleus. Okay, but here the in the prokaryotic cell of bacteria, such structures are completely absent. Okay, that means here membrane is not present, nuclear pores are absent, nucleolus is absent. Okay, that's why I'm saying the bacteria it is a typical prokaryotic cell which lacks well organized nucleus okay just we have discussed uh, the sum of bacteria are autotrophic they possesses the chlorophyll pigments okay and with the help of these chlorophyll pigment they can synthesize their own food material okay in some of the bacteria okay not in all the bacteria okay in some of the bacteria the chlorophyll pigments are present and if pigments are present, these are present in involuted cytoplasmic membrane. Okay, they are present in the involuted cytoplasmic membrane. And well developed plastids are absent. Well developed plastid means what? The chloroplast. It is a type of a plastid. Okay, which is present in the plant. But in the bacteria, the chlorophyll is absent and it is not present developed a plastid instead it is present in the primary involuted cytoplasmic membrane okay the that is the another difference between the plant cell and the bacteria is that some of the bacteria the chlorophyll pigments are present but these are present in the involuted cytoplasmic membrane and well developed are absent in the bacteria cell. okay while in the Plants, the chlorophyll pigments these are present in the well developed plastid as the chloroplast. Okay, then another typical prokaryotic structure uh, of the bacteria is that uh, cell organelles like the mitochondria, endoplasmic uh, uh, reticulum, Golgi bodies, these are entirely absent. Okay. The like the mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, these are entirely absent. Okay, here the function of the mitochondria, these are functioning as the powerhouses of the cell. Okay, but here the function of the mitochondria, it is believed to be performed by the another organelles which 
primitive and these are called as the mesosomes okay the function in the bacteria is performed by the mesosomes okay e s o s o m e s we will tell regarding mesosomes in the ultra structure of the bacteria okay here remember that the organelles like the mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum and algae bodies these are entirely absent and the function of mitochondria it is performed by the another organelle which is called as the mesosomes m e s o s o m e s mesosomes then also here ribosomes are present okay ribosomes these are the cell organelles in which the protein synthesis takes place okay abundant number large number of the ribosomes these are present in the bacterial cell okay then about the reproduction the most common method of reproduction in bacteria is the binary fission okay there are methods of the reproduction in the uh, bacteria that is by the binary fission by budding by the formation of endospores okay but the most common method of reproduction in the bacteria it is binary fission okay most asexual in the bacteria is the binary fission okay sexual reproduction absent okay sexual reproduction is absent is reported okay sexual reproduction means what the transfer of the material from one gen to the other generation space okay here the true sexual reproduction is entirely absent okay in the genes or how or the genes are transferred to the another gender okay in typical sexual reproduction male gametes and female gametes are developed then the fertilization process takes place fertilization process means the fusion of the male gamete and the female gamete takes place and then the genetic recombination takes place okay in the back cell the sexual reproduction is absent that means the formation and the male gamete male gamete, female gamete and then the fusion it does not takes place in the bacterial cell but though the male gamete and female gametes are formed then fertilization get accomplished but though the combination transfer genetic material from one cell to the another cell is reported and it takes place by the three methods okay genetic recombination simply you can consider it transfer of genetic material from the one cell cell here takes place without formation of the male and the female gamete and without their fusion okay there are three methods by which the genetic recombination in the bacteria takes place and the first one is the conjugation second one is and the third one is the transduction okay and here we can see the in the bacteria the reproduction takes place by two methods the first one is the asexual method and the second one is the sexual method typically the it is not the uh, sexual reproduction is, uh, uh, more appropriate to refer it as a combination okay in the asexual reproduction it takes place by various methods like the binary fusion, budding, then formation of the endospore, but the binary fusion is the most common method of sexual reproduction in bacteria. Okay, the sexual reproduction here, reproduction in two sense does not exist. Two sense means what? In the sexual reproduction, male gamete and female gametes are formed. The fusion of this male gamete and female gamete takes place. That is, we called it as a fertilization process, and that the genetic recombination takes place. Okay. Simply, we can say transfer of genetic material from one cell to the another cell. Though 
the sexual reproduction that is the formation of male and female gamete and their fusion it does not take place in the bacteria the transfer of a genetic material that is the genetic recombination from one bacterial cell to the another bacterial cell is reported and it takes place by the three principal methods the first one it is the coagulation the second one is the transformation and the third one is the transduction okay then the bacteria motile or the non motile motile or non motile means what that is they can move from one place to another place some of the bacteria these while some of the bacteria these are non motile okay in the motile bacteria the presence of the organ which is called as the flagella due to which the bacteria can move from one place to the another place okay in the motile bacteria or more flagella may be present in the motile bacteria okay it is not necessary that these uh, flagella these uh, uh, organs which are required uh, for their movement these are present in all bacteria there are some of the bacteria we are motile okay while some of the bacteria these are non motile okay some of the bacteria these are motile okay uh, motile bacteria they can move from one place to the another cell with the help of the flagella flagella they may may be presence of the or more flagella in such a type of the bacteria okay presence of one or more flagella in the motile bacteria flagella these are nothing but these are made up of a special type of the protein okay these flagella these are made up of special type of protein and these proteins are called as the F-L-A-G-E-L-L-I-N. Flagella. These are made up of protein flagellin. Okay. Then in gram-negative bacteria, minute hair-like cytoplasmic appendages are present along with the flagella. Okay. Gram-negative bacteria. There are two types of bacteria. Okay. Depending on their staining property, gram-positive and the gram-negative okay we will discuss the gram positive and gram negative bacteria in the ultra structure of the bacteria okay while studying the ultra structure of bacteria we will discuss what is mean by the gram positive bacteria and the gram negative bacteria okay just here in the just remember that in the gram negative bacteria along with the flagella there is a presence of the minute hair like plasmic appendages and these appendages are called as the pili or fimbri okay or the okay just remember here in gram negative bacteria the minute hair like cytoplasmic appendages are present along with the flagella and these are called as the pili or the fimbri okay these are pili or the fimbri these made up of the special type of the protein and these are called as the fimbrilin or pili okay fimbrilin f i m b r i l l l i n okay fimbrilin or pilin okay these pili or the fimbri these are of protein called as the pilin or the fimbrilin okay then the viruses these are omnipresent why we are saying that these viruses are omnipresent because viruses these are cosmopolitan in distribution cosmopolitan in distribution means what these are present in the all possible habitat one can think okay the viruses are cosmopolitan in distribution that means these are present in all possible habitat one can think okay for example yeah, these are present in the atmosphere to the height of about 6 km okay in the atmosphere these are present to the height of about 6 km 
okay then the some of says these are also present on the sea floor the sea floor that is about 5 km below the mean sea level okay the viruses these are also reported from the sea floor 5 km below the mean sea level okay then some of the it adapt normal aerobic environment and also other bacteria they thrive well in the absence of oxygen that means they are anaerobic okay some of the bacteria require their oxygen for their survival these are aerobic bacteria while some of the bacteria they also thrive well they get survived in the absence of oxygen that is these bacteria these are anaerobic okay then some of the bacteria exist in the hot water springs okay they also exist in the hot water spring while some of the bacteria they ported the atlantic ocean that is they survive below the freezing point in the atlantic ocean okay they below point in the atlantic ocean okay then generally top bacteria can tolerate some type of bacteria can tolerate the hydrogen concentration or simply we can say ph or the hydrogen ion concentration or the ph which is ranging from 0 to 11 okay can tolerate the ph which is ranging from the 0 to 11 okay bacteria they live at the pressure of one atmosphere okay the bacteria normally can live pressure of one atmosphere but they can tolerate the pressure of about 3000 to 6000 atmospheric pressure okay don't forget that the viruses they can tolerate about 3000 to 6000 atmospheric pressure and generally the bacteria lives at one atmospheric pressure okay here uh, that the highest pressure Test pressure at the oceanic depth is 1000 atmospheric pressure okay though the oceanic depth is 1000 atmospheric pressure but the bacteria they can survive they can tolerate about 3000 to 6000 atmospheric pressure okay that is the atmospheric pressure it is not the limiting factor in the distribution of the bacteria okay atmospheric pressure it is not a limiting factor in the distribution of the bacteria okay these bacteria they can withstand the here uh, the we have discussed the, the different habitats of the and now you can uh, um, see that that the bacteria they can withstand extremes of temperature like moisture acidity and the salinity the bacteria can withstand the of temperatures like moisture acidity and salinity the bacteria be adapted to the wide variety of the energy sources okay that means these are the aerobic bacteria in certain type of the anaerobic bacteria are also there okay these are adapted to the wide variety of the energy sources then uh, immense biological success because these bacteria these are found in each and every type of the uh, habitat one can think okay and immense biological success of the bacteria it is due to the their small size biological is due to small size multiplication rate okay they can multiply really fast okay the immense biological success of the bacteria it is due to the each and every habitat one can think because they can withstand temperature like the moisture acidity and the salinity 
these are adapted to the wide variety of energy sources and success it is uh, due to the small size rapid multiplication rate their ability to survive under adverse mental conditions and uh, metabolic adaptations then bacteria the size of the bacteria it ranges from the 0 0.5 to 2 micrometers okay here the size of the bacteria it ranges from 0 0.5 to 2 micrometer okay 2 micrometer 1 micrometer is equal to the 0 0.001 millimeter okay, the bacteria these are ultra microscopic okay, the size it ranges from 0 0.5 to 2 micrometer okay 1 micrometer it is equal to 0 0.001 millimeter Okay, and generally the size of bacteria it works with the shape. Okay, the size of the bacteria it also works with the shape. For example, uh, in the cocci bacteria, cocci it is a Greek term. Cocci means spherical bacteria. The spherical shaped bacteria, the diameter it generally ranges from the zero to two point five micrometer. Okay size of bacteria it varies with the shape of the bacteria in the spherical or the cocoa the diameter it ranges from 0 to 2.5 micrometer while in the bacillus or the rod shaped bacteria while in the bacillus or the rod shaped bacteria which are larger than the spherical type of the bacteria bacillus this is also the greek word that means the rod shaped or the elongated bacteria these rod shaped or the elongated bacteria these are larger in size than the spherical bacteria or cocci bacteria okay generally it ranges from 0 0.3 to 15 micrometer in the width Okay, bacillus or the rod shaped bacteria it ranges from 0 0.3 to 15 micrometer in the width. Uh, one bacteria, Thiophysa volutans. Okay, Thiophysa, T H I O P H Y S A. Okay, Thiophysa volutans. L U T A N S. Volutans, it is having diameter it is a cocci or the spherical bacteria and it is having the diameter of the micro the diameter 18 micrometer and that's why <clears throat> the thiophysa volutans it is believed to be the perhaps largest among all bacteria okay thiophysa volutans it is having the diameter of 18 micro and that's why it is believed to be the largest perhaps it is largest among all the area okay that is all about the general characters of the bacteria